Joe's old tech. Yesterday's tech of tomorrow. Today. Today we are looking at this Samsung flash cam. Oh look, full HD you say. Full HD. It's the SMX K40. Well, hold on a minute, you're thinking SMX was Samsung's standard definition range of camcorders. But this is clearly, as it says on the box, full HD. What's going on? Well, let's find out. Now, the Samsung SMX K40. As you can see, there's the box there. Looks very nice, doesn't it? Flash cam, full HD, 1080p. Well, then what's this in tiny writing at the top there? Playback. Hmm. And it's, it's called a high-end HD-like memory camcorder. What is going on here? Well, this is a rather bizarre camcorder that Samsung launched in 2009, in late 2009, August, I think it was, 2009. Um, and it's a standard definition camcorder, <laughs> even though it's got full HD plastered all over the box. Um, it's a standard definition camcorder which has a built-in um, upscaler. So it actually sh uh, shoots in 720 by 576 for the PAL version, 720 by 480 in the US version, of course, for their NTSC system. Um, and then when you plug it into your TV, you can it'll upscale it to full HD. Well, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Now, in 2009, HD camcorders were pretty pretty expensive. Um, the this was three hundred and twenty nine dollars ninety nine, which probably normally with uh, electrical goods like this, it doesn't translate that it'd be cheaper in the UK. It probably would be about three hundred and thirty quid in the UK. Um, and similarly, HD camcorders were about five hundred dollars, so about five hundred quid in the UK at that time. But it's not like Samsung weren't making HD camcorders because at the same time as they launched this, the SMX K40, they also launched the um, HMX U10. Now this is a HMX U20, the one that came after it, but the U10 was very much the same size as this. It shot in full HD and it was a pocket camcorder like this. Um, and so you'd think, well, why wouldn't Samsung just put, if they could shoot in, if they could make pocket camcorders, this would have been, the U10 would have been $200. So Samsung were producing a HD pocket camcorder for $200, which shot in full HD, but they were selling this more traditional sized handheld camcorder for $329, which didn't shoot in full, AD, full HD, but upscaled allegedly to full HD, which is rather odd, isn't it? This is the, um, as I say, the HMX U20, which is a great little pocket camcorder, mainly because it has a three times optical zoom. You rarely get optical zoom on pocket camcorders, especially ones like this size. So if you want a good three times optical zoom on a pocket camcorder, which is very handy, get yourself the Samsung U20. So let's have a look at this. It's slightly misleading and <laughs> slightly more than slightly misleading I would say. This is probably Samsung's cheekiest camcorder and we'll decide by the end if this really is Samsung's or maybe anyone else's cheekiest camcorder because it's like I say you've got full HD 1080 full HD 1080 but it shoots in 720 by 576 high-end HD-like memory camcorder. Now that's the kind of thing you'd expect to see written on one of these cheap knockoff camcorders, ones that, you know, these really very, very cheap, I won't name any names, but you know the ones I mean, very cheap camcorders, but uh, let's have a look at it. Let's get it out of the box. Now, this is another eBay purchase. I got this for under 20 quid, which, and like I say about old tech, you can't be old tech because, if you like old tech, then you can get things like this, which when it came out was over you know, 330 quid, 
you can get it now for like under 20, which is just amazing when you think that at the time this was a, you know, a big deal for Samsung, but quite an odd deal as well. Let's take it out. There's an inner box there. I won't take that out. But, um, there's no manual in this box, unfortunately, but just the, all the sort of leads you'd expect, the wall charger and the camcorder itself. Um, now, I'm actually filming on a Samsung HMX H200 in full HD. So we'll, we'll uh, be going to do some comparisons later on. So to be fair, I'm filming on a Samsung HD camcorder and we'll be talking about this camcorder and see if it does actually upscale to full HD. I think there's something else on the box about the um, what it includes let's have a look no because it does uh, yeah it's got IntelliZoom and all that sort of stuff I'm not sure I don't think because on the American box it says it doesn't include one of these HDMI lead um, this is my own one this wasn't in this box when I got it so if they didn't include it which they didn't in the American one so I've no reason to believe they did in this uh, European version it seems weird that they're marketing this, you know, upscales to, to full HD, HDMI, they've got plastered on the actual camcorder there, but they don't supply the HDMI lead, I suppose. It was still very expensive at the time. But let's have a look at the camcorder itself. Again, we've got full HD written there. 1080 playback. So this is a bit cheeky of them, isn't it, really? Um, I really don't understand why they did it because if you can if you're selling a pocket camcorder for two hundred dollars wouldn't it couldn't you take couldn't you have the, couldn't you have the HD chip and all that you needed to make HD and put it in one of these and just sell this for cheaper I would have thought it'd be more expensive to have a camcorder with a built-in upscaler than it would to make it HD but um, obviously not but here it is, it turns on, oh the nice thing about it, as you may have heard, might have heard then, let's just, when you turn it on, automatic shutter, that's always nice to see, <laughs> bit of a partridge mo moment there, it's an extender. Um, so we've got, uh, let's have a look, you've got all the usual controls, usual menus here, now this like several other Samsung camcorders at this time. I'm not sure if they still do it, but what I what I do like about these camcorders, I've got one here. This, if you go to Amazon and look up the uh, SMX, I keep forgetting what it's called, K40, they did a K44, which had uh, built-in memory as well, which itself, yeah, that, the, I think K45, I think it was at 32 gigabyte, and that was 500 quid. Or $500 so you could have got a full HD camcorder for that but weird but anyway like I say if you go to Amazon and look up the SMX K40 it says um, there is a newer model of this and they talk about this which is the SMX F40 um, which also shoots in 720 I'll just show you something on here which I like this doesn't have the automatic shut out a little button there but that's okay now the good thing about this camcorder and many of these Samsung camcorders is I'll start recording you see it's recording now the handy thing about it is while it's recording if you've got the auto shut off turned off in the menu and you close the LCD screen you think, well, well, that's stopped recording, isn't it? But no, it carries on recording. See the blue light flashing? There we are. So it's still recording, even though the LCD screen is closed, which is very handy. I've got a... Uh, let's just stop that. See, look, as you can see, still recording. So that's a very handy feature to have. When I, I play gigs, I sing in a band, and... Sometimes what I'll do is I'll take this uh, Samsung, which one's this? 
so many of these you forget which one this is the f8 the hmx f80 this only shoots in 720 1280 by 780 um, but this also you can start recording and close the lcd and it'll just keep recording so i often record gigs with this i'll just set this up somewhere out of sight um, so you can use the LCD screen to, uh, you know, make sure I'm picking up all the, all the band or the, you know, whatever area I want to cover. Uh, start recording, close it, and then it's just unobtrusive, out of the way recording. And another good thing with these, if you get a battery, you see the battery says on here, it says uh, four hours, ten minutes battery, which is brilliant. If you get one of these batteries. Um, that comes with the SMX F40 and use it in the uh, F80 you get over four hours of HD recording which is great so as I say if you're recording a, if you've got something going on an event or some something you just want to just get a general coverage of it you could just set this up close the LCD screen it's still recording and you're going to get over four hours of recording i think it comes to it's just you're going to need a 32 gigabyte card because i think it's about 20 gig for uh, just over four hours of 720 footage on one of these so that's something to bear in mind but anyway back to this the k40 so you've got hdmi plastered on there but you don't get the lead <laughs> but you have got the automatic shutter opener which is good uh, and all the usual menus so as a camcorder it's quite a nice one it's got a different kind of battery though unfortunately um let's just turn it off turn it off there I'll, I'll actually before i turn it off when you plug it into your tv which i'm going to demonstrate a bit later on here's a button there hd output on or off so apparently if you uh, connect this to your tv um, and have that off it will show the footage in standard definition um, but if you turn it on it will upscale it so we'll we'll try that later and see how that works so that's that button there I'll just turn this off um, here's a little back door there which has got the HDMI output socket there the small USB micro USB was that mini USB? I always get mixed up. Mini USB, I think, is micro is the one that's more for mobile phones, isn't it? Um, a AV jack and the charge point there where you plug the, plug the charger into. Um, you can remove the battery, but as I say, it's a different battery to these kind of ones, which have these ones at the back. I've said before, I'm not that keen on these camcorders with batteries hanging out the back, but as these don't really stick out much, and in fact the f 80s one is flush with the back of the camcorder, I'll let them off, I'll let Samsung off on that one. But on this, on the K40, it's underneath, and it's uh, this, uh, it's handy that this has a built-in, these little rubberized clips at the bottom there, so... I think I've seen some reviews of this with the American version, and I don't think it had those rubber bits, so I could lose it. I could be wrong, but I'm sure that's the case. Have a look and see. But this is the kind of battery you get with it. It's a, what is it? It's a Samsung IABH130LB. So it's a kind of sort of, almost like a mobile phone type battery, isn't it? Um, that's where the SD card goes in. I haven't got one in at the moment, but I'll pop one in, obviously, before I start recording um, to show you some footage. But it's quite a nice, nice size camcorder. It's got this sort of matte black plastic, and uh, there's the microphone there, and that's the speaker there when you play your footage. It hasn't got the rotating. Some of them Samsung camcorders have that rotating grip, and it doesn't have that. It just has a normal no hand grip but it's quite a nice size but we're going to see is this Samsung's cheekiest camcorder well I'm going to record some footage on this I'll also record the what, what I record with this I'll record again with this full HD Samsung HMX H200 I'll also record the same footage 
with this, the SMX F40, just to compare SD to SD, and then compare the upscaled HD to Samsung's real HD and see how it compares. Um, as for taking photos, of course, and you've got your zoom. Um, but like I say, it does record with the LCD closed, so that's a plus point. But what does the footage actually look like? Well, let's have a look. Now normally when you're showing footage from a camera you can just incorporate the file of the footage you've shot into the video that you're making. But obviously the selling point of this is that it converts the standard definition that it shoots in into HD which can only be accessed via the HDMI output being plugged into a TV. So what I'm going to have to do is plug this in and show you the footage as it's filmed in SD and then turn the HD interpolator on oh, it's on already and uh, see what difference that makes now to start with I filmed the scene I'm going to show you from this I filmed the exact same thing with the SMX F40 um, and also the camera I'm filming on now the uh, HMX H200 so what I'm going to do is show you the footage from all of these on the TV and then we can compare them now this is the problem it's not actually coming out so bad on here but the problem with recording off a TV is the flicker you get the flicker and flutter but that's not actually so bad on here so I might get away with it, but to make it better, if you do film your TV, if it's a modern TV, like an LCD, like this, and you're getting all the flicker and flutter from the screen as you film it, go into the menu, go into the... oh, that's why. I'll show you why. Normally, we have the backlight on about 12 or 13. See, and that's where you get the flicker. So you turn the backlight up to maximum, which is on 20 now, and that cuts out a lot of that flicker, which is why it looks all right now. Okay, this is the footage from the Samsung SMX F40. Now, as you can see, the aspect ratio is off because with all these Samsung standard definition camcorders and a lot of other standard definition camcorders there's a problem with the metadata in the file so it comes out squished um, YouTube you used to be able to upload a file like this into YouTube and then put a little tag underneath it in a description to stretch it out and it would stretch it out but they don't do that anymore so you'd have to stretch that out in post-production so now we're going to look at the footage from the SMX K40 I've just got to it's not easy doing this behind the camera recording and doing in front of camera stuff at the same time right I'm going to have to plug this into the TV and we'll see what the footage is like okay so first of all we're going to be looking at the footage from the SMX K40 in the standard definition it was filmed at, 720 by 576. This actually looks a bit weird. Looks a bit weird, doesn't it? Now we look at the same footage with the HD output turned on. Let's see what difference that makes. Doesn't look that different, if I'm being honest. So 
So this is the SMX K40 with the HD output turned on. Notice any difference? Now this is footage from the HMX H200 which films in full HD. Now I know this looks like a still but I wanted to film a static scene so it'd be easier to compare the footage from each camcorder. So what I'm going to do after this is I'm going to take a still from each of these and put them right next to each other so we can compare because it's quite hard to see them separately like this isn't it to compare the quality. So looking at this comparison picture the SMX F40 footage looks almost as clear as the SMX K40 with the HD out on. <laughs> the uh, K40 with the HD out turned off just looks like the contrast has been cranked up really doesn't it? And the uh, HD out on just looks like it's been smoothed out a bit. Clearly not full HD comparing it to the HMX H200 which as you can see is much clearer and uh, high definition. So the Samsung SMX K40. Is this Samsung's cheekiest camcorder? I would have to say yes. Um, the, it's clearly not full HD even when it's been upscaled by the internal upscaler. It's still basically SD but slightly smoothed over so I don't know why they didn't just call this standard definition plus with a you know denoiser footage smoother option because it's clearly not full HD um, although when you play the footage out of the camcorder onto your TV via the HDMI it plays the file in the proper aspect ratio 16 by 9 which is what I filmed it on the actual file itself, unfortunately, if you play that, if you copy the standard definition file off the um, off the memory card and play it on your computer, it's still got the same old standard definition problem of having the incorrect metadata uh, to do with the aspect ratio, ratio, so it comes out squished. So that's a bit unfortunate because I was going to recommend this as a good standard definition camcorder because of the fact that it didn't seem to have a squished file but it does and also the battery is not the best it only lasts a couple of hours um, I suppose because it's got built-in um, built-in upscaler they needed the space which is why they used one of these sort of mobile phone style batteries which again is a shame because the standard definition camcorder batteries that um, Samsung use on their other models like the F 40 and others um, would last up to about four hours or so which would have been great to have for this camera but uh, unfortunately not so I'm gonna have to say yes this is Samsung's cheekiest camcorder um, but an interesting curio in the uh, in the history of camcorders transi transitioning from standard definition to high definition and trying to bridge the gap in between which this doesn't really do. So I hope you enjoyed this review and test and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.